At the start of the Second World War, India was under British rule or British Raj, as it had been since 1858, before which it was under the thumb of the British East India Trading Company. The war itself was a catalyst for change, a violent shake of the snow globe, and while it resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Indians, it also promoted military, economic, industrial and political growth, with India emerging as an industrial powerhouse and ultimately breaking the shackles of British rule. While there were radicals who went as far as to side with the Axis, not every Indian with anti-colonial inclinations took up arms against Britain and the Allies. As we all know, millions of Indians fought alongside the Allies with distinguished bravery, with tens of thousands paying the ultimate price. The thing is, not all of us do know that, and like so many fighting nations, India's contribution to the Allied cause are overshadowed by those of other powerful nations. In this video, we're going to chase off some of that shadow, though we're also going to shed a bit of light on those radical anti-colonial Indians who marched under the Axis flags. When India declared war on Germany shortly after Britain in September 1939, the British Indian Army remained a volunteer force, boasting a strength of about 205,000. Though despite remaining a volunteer force, its numbers ballooned to 2.5 million throughout the war, making it the largest volunteer army that has ever been. But why would they volunteer to fight for Britain? when so many of their own people were fighting to be free from British rule. It's certainly more complicated than this, but for a lot of Indians, it came down to protecting their homes and their families from Japanese invasion, which did come to fruition in the Japanese Yugo Offensive. Also, the war was starving India, devouring its resources and inflating its economy, and many Indians volunteered for the army simply to fill their bellies and to make some bank others joined just for the challenge of it. On the other side of the desk, the British Indian Army filled its ranks with caution, recruiting only those who weren't so easily swayed by politics, such as those from regions of India which weren't so strongly nationalist. Lastly, we must also consider that 2.5 million isn't a whole lot compared to India's 1939 population of almost 378 million. So, what did the British Indian Army actually do? Well, comprised of infantry, engineer, artillery, armoured airborne and Gurkha units, the army fought on home soil in India, in Southeast Asia, in the Middle East, in Africa and in Europe. However, some of its more famous contributions were in the battles of Impol and Kohima, in which British Indian units rebounded the Japanese Yugo offensive and turned the tide of the Burma campaign and in the Battle of Monte Cassino, in which British Indian units replaced withdrawn American units and spent thousands of lives to help capture the abbey and the mountains surrounding it, lifting the Italian campaign out of the mud in which it was stuck. Overall, it's estimated that some 87,000 Indians lost their lives fighting for the British Indian Army, while more than 34,000 were wounded, more than 11,000 were deemed missing, and between 67,000 and 80,000 became prisoners of war. But Indian bravery and sacrifice did not go unrewarded. Indians received 4,000 awards for gallantry throughout the war, including 31 Victoria Crosses and 7 George Crosses. Among those Indians who received Victoria Crosses were Fazal Din and Namdev Chadav, whose brave deeds we'll outline now. At 23, Punjabi Muslim Fazal Din was a naik, which is equivalent to a corporal in the 7th Battalion of the 10th Baluch Regiment. On the 2nd of March 1945, Din and his section were assaulting a Japanese position in Burma. The section was previously accompanied by a tank, though the tank had rolled on ahead, leaving the small infantry unit between three enemy bunkers on one flank and one bunker and an enemy. 
leaving the small infantry unit between three enemy bunkers on one flank and one bunker and an enemy occupied house on the other flank. Machine gun fire whipped through the death channel in which they were caught and grenades burst all around them. But Din had grenades of his own and he lobbed them at the bunker nearest to him, filling its occupants with metal. He then led his unit against the next bunker, all while under heavy machine gun fire. Though before he could clear out the house, six Japanese soldiers charged out of it, brandishing swords. Din's Bren gunner managed to gun down one of the onrushing swordmen, though he expended his mag in the process and was cut down. Din was running to the downed Bren gunner's side, though before he could reach him, a Japanese officer ran his blade through Din's chest and out of his back. But the heroics of Naik Fazal Din didn't end there. After the officer slid his sword out of his chest, Din wrestled the sword from the officer's grip and used it to slay him. He then cut down two other Japanese soldiers with that very same blade, and waving the bleeding weapon through the air, rallied his section onward, ultimately allowing them to take the enemy position, which had been held by 55 men. Din staggered to his platoon's HQ, made a report, and collapsed, dying soon after from his wounds. His Victoria Cross was awarded posthumously. Also at 23, Namdev Jadav was a sepoy in the 1st Battalion of the 5th Maratha Light Infantry Regiment, and on the 9th of April 1945, he and his company were assaulting the flood banks of a section of the Senio River in Italy. The Germans had hollowed out the positions in the banks and sown the banks with mines, and while Jadav was wading through the 5 foot deep, 15 foot wide section of the river, the Germans opened fire on his company, killing all but Jadav, his company commander, and two other men, who were both gravely wounded. While under heavy machine gun fire and mortar fire, Jadav carried one of the wounded men through the river and up the slippery face of the flood bank through a belt of mines. Jadav then returned for the other men, making the daring trip all over again, and once both of his wounded comrades were in relative safety, Jadav let out his rage through the barrel of his Tommy gun, killing everything in the nearest German dugout. During his vengeful assault, however, Jadav was wounded in the hand, rendering him unable to use his firearm. But that didn't even slow this courageous support. Jadav ditched his Tommy gun and started lobbing grenades instead, obliterating two more German posts. He then stood out in the open, mortar shells blowing up all around him, and shouted the Maratha war cry, while waving the other British Indian companies over the river, allowing them to secure a better bridgehead and ultimately thwarting all German resistance in the area. Namdev Jadav survived the war and continued to serve in the British Indian Army and subsequently the Indian Army until 1963. To conclude this section on the British Indian Army, Field Marshal Sir Claude Auchinleck said that Britain couldn't have come through both wars if they hadn't had the Indian Army, and British historian Yasmin Khan said, Britain did not fight the Second World War, the British Empire did. Though it wasn't all battle cries in the face of the Axis. As we said, tens of thousands of Indians actually fought alongside the Axis powers, with by far the greatest proportion of these men serving in the Indian National Army, or INA which was forged in alliance with Imperial Japan. Basically, Indian revolutionary leader Rash Bahadi Bose proposed the Indian POWs captured by the Japanese in the Malayan campaign and in Singapore be released and unified in an anti-colonial pseudo-military force, which the Japanese agreed to. Differences between the INA's leaders and the Japanese military led to the INA being disbanded in the same year it was created, 1942, though Indian nationalist Subhas Chandra Bose reunified the INA in 1943, building the force to a strength of around 43,000. Reinvigorated by Chandra Bose, the INA fought alongside Japan against the British Indian Army and the Allies in the Burma Campaign, most notably in the aforementioned battles of Impal and Kohima. Though after the war, 16,000 INA members were repatriated to India, and 11,000 of them were tried for treason. While the Allies may have viewed the NIA as Axis collaborators during and immediately after the war, 
Many Indians commemorated them as patriots after India broke the shackles of the British Raj. So yes, the situation was a little bit more complicated than allied equals good and Axis equals bad, and the men of the INA still fought bravely for what they and many other Indians believed in. Indian POWs and expats in Europe were similarly unified in the Free India Legion, which was first assigned to the Hir and then the Waffen SS, under which it was known as the Indian Volunteer Legion of the Waffen SS. The same Chandra Boss initiated the formation of the unit and it peaked at a strength of around 4,500. An anti-colonial Indian unit known as Battaglioni Azad Hindustan was also formed in fascist Italy, growing to a strength of about 400. This unit was disbanded however, as the Italians feared the Indians weren't wholly loyal, which proved to be true when Axis forces were defeated in El Amain in November of 1942, and the Indian troops of Battaglioni Azad Hindustan committed mutiny. These Indians were then returned to the POW camps from which they were recruited. While we've covered the contributions of the British Indian Army and some Axis collaborating Indian pseudo-military forces, India also contributed to World War II in many other ways, such as providing financial and industrial support to the Allies, which included supplying them with huge quantities of armaments and allowing the construction of US military bases in India for use in the China-Burma-India theater. Though, those are perhaps the topics of subsequent videos. For now, we hope we've provided you with some insight into the bravery and sacrifice of Indians in the Second World War, a topic that sorely needs more light cast upon it. But as always, we're interested to hear what you think. Why do you think Indians volunteered to fight for the British, even though the British were basically occupying their country? Also, do you think Axis collaborating Indians like those in the Indian National Army were patriotic heroes, or do you think they were traitors? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And just before you go guys, if you want access to exclusive history content, then make sure you check out our wider community on our Facebook, Instagram, and Discord, where you have access to photos, memes, and on our Discord, other history buffs to talk to, all in the pursuit of acquiring more historical knowledge that we don't show on this channel. So as I said, if you do want to check out this exclusive content, please just check the description down below and click the links. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.